Hey folks, Mark back with another vinyl update. I know it's been six months, been a long time, but uh, life of course happens. I moved into a house and, um, you know, work, the usual stuff has kept me from getting around to a video sooner than I would have liked. So anyway, um, hope you're all doing well. I'm looking forward to a nice spring. Uh, got a couple music festivals coming up that I'm looking forward to um, in a month. Heading to Austin to what was Austin Psych Fest. Now it is Levitation 2016. And I'm going to see people like Brian Wilson doing Pat Sounds, uh, Slow Dive, Asteroid Number 4, Black Angels, Lee Scratch Perry, Sleep. Too many to mention. I mean, there's just there's just so many. Uncle Ass in the Dead Beats. Um, I mean, it's just, it's, I'm looking really forward to it. So that's coming up. And then um, a month later, I'm going to Brooklyn, New York to see some of my, to New York City Pop Fest. And some of my all-time favorite groups are playing. They're like the Primitives and the Railway Children and the Chills. Even as we speak from Australia, the band that was on Sarah, um, Trash Can Sinatras, the Chesterfields, loads of bands. So looking forward to that as well. So that should, uh, after all of that, it'll be nice to kind of chill back during the summer and kind of hang out around here in Cleveland. So anyway. I want to show you some stuff, highlights of, of records I picked up over the last six months. I've got a lot of stuff, so um, I want to whip through it as quick as I can. And, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, and if you're wondering what kind of stuff I show, it's typically new wave, post-punk, indie, that kind of thing. So um, if you're not into that, move on. If you are into it, great. So anyway, start with this one, The Hollow Men band I got into around 1990 with their album Cresta that they put out on Arista. Great Manchester kind of like, you know, like Stone Roses kind of guitar pop, psychedelic guitar pop. Well, it turned out they'd had two albums out in the 80s prior to that album and I could never find them. I mean, I've been looking for these since like 1990. So I uh, finally broke down and got one uh, on Discogs. I try not to do Discogs as much because it's such a hole I can fall into. But um, I wanted to get this. So The Hollow Men is called Tales from the Riverbank. And uh, so I believe it's their second album. And good, wistful guitar pop with a psychedelic feel to it. Probably around 1988 is the release date. Poe, not the female singer from the 1990s. This is an act called Poe from 1983 featuring Graham Lewis and Bruce Gilbert of Wire and A.C. Marius uh, on vocals. And she had later went on to do a great album on mute back in 1987 called uh, One of Our Girls Has Gone Missing. 87 or 88, I forget the exact year that came out. But got me interested in this. Um, experimental electronic pop. Sometimes uh, it, it, it kind of has a synth pop feel, but more often than not, it's got more electronic or a more experimental feel. Think maybe like Yazoo, um, or Yaz from the Upstairs at Eric's, that track I Before E Except After C. If you like that, this might be something you, you like. Set the Tone. This is an act out of Scotland, and it was formed by Kenny Hyslop, who had previously been um, briefly in Simple Minds and also the Skids. This is more of an electronic dance with a kind of a hip-hop feel to it. And uh, Set the Tone to a four-piece. They did one album and four 12 inches. This is one of them called Rap Your Love. Just good, um, like Tom Tom Club, if you like Tom Tom Club or, or Grace Jones. From that time period, get, you might get it to set, set the tone. Like them a lot. Discreet Campaigns. This is, boy, this. This original, this compilation, originally it came out on cassette in 1985. And a friend of mine had it. And we used to play it in the car. And I so wanted it. Because it was full of, like, exclusive tracks and remixes by some of the coolest indie bands of the time. And, well, it's now been released on vinyl. On this double splatter vinyl. So I snagged myself a copy. I never could find the tape. It was that thing was hard to find even when it came out, but it boasted at the time exclusive tracks by Eilis and Gaza, The Wake, Cocteau Twins, James, first time I'd ever heard of James, The Decemberist, not the group, The Decemberists, a group called The Decemberist, Furniture, Diff Jews, Chris and Cozy, Darudy Collum, uh, Gonsite, and New Order had uh, an instrumental version of the song Sunrise on here. Great to find this on vinyl. Um, again, been coveting that for a long time. The Bible, British band, jangly, kind of like Aztec camera, think that. Um, just guitar pop with an acoustic feel to it. This is their first album. It was called Walking the Ghost Back Home. This is the 25th anniversary edition remastered. I never could find the original album of this. 
and it comes with the original album plus uh, an EP of B-sides, radio sessions, and uh, a couple tracks for acoustic. The Bible, just good stuff. Fiction Factory Scottish Band, this is their second album, Another Story. Not as catchy as the first one. The first one had their big 1984 hit, um, in the UK at least, Feels Like Heaven. And um, this is their follow-up, another story on, a, on an independent label called Foundry Records. A slick synth pop, you know, polished 80s pop. Not great, but not, but not bad either. The Lurkers, this is an album that's been on my list for a long time, Fulham Fallout. This is a late 70s UK punk, uh, a lot like the Ramones, you know, uh, just really, or early Damned. I think like first couple Damned albums and you're, you're in the right neighborhood. This is a Fulham Fallout, The Lurkers, and one of the first albums to be released on Beggar's Banquet. There's a band called The Birds from the mid-1960s with uh, Ron Wood in the group. You can spot that hairstyle a mile away. Ron Wood, this is a really good, I don't think they ever did an album, so this is a collection of their singles. And um, just bluesy, uh, just bluesy guitar rock. I mean, not unlike the Yardbirds, early Rolling Stones, very garagey kind of feel to it. Really quality, top-notch songs too. Look, check out the track "Leaving Here" by the Birds on YouTube, and you'll you'll get a sense of what they're like. Talking Heads. This is their 1975 CBS demo sessions bootleg album, and apparently they recorded an album for CBS, and, and in the demo form, CBS turned it down. So Sire, of course, picked them up. They re-recorded all these songs for the first album, but um. There's a lot of songs on here that, that aren't even on the first album. So, um, really good stuff. Talking Heads, the 75 CBS demo session. Yeah, you can see there's quite a few songs on here. Give you a better look there. But great quality. Great quality recording, but also the, the music is of great quality. Okay, now here's... And I'm going to put these together. Yeah, here's a couple of 60s um, garage comps that I picked up recently. One... And both are great series. This one's Tony the Tiger Presents Buzz, Flakes, and Shakes. Just good jangly guitar pop with a garagey feel. And then Teenage Shutdown is another great series of um, 60s garage pop. This one's called Nobody to Love. Mid-60s teen folk punk, 18 tales of tension and trauma. So yeah, I love all this kind of nuggetsy stuff. I'm a sucker for it. The Weather Prophets. This is a great band. Um, this was the missing link in my collection. I never had this. Two unreleased B-sides on the back. 12 inches called Always the Light. One of their last releases. Singer Pete Astor had previously had a band called The Loft who are back together and they're really good. But uh, he now records solo and has an album out on Slumberland called Spilt Milk. Pick that up. Uh, Pete Astor still records quality material. Um, solo stuff's a, lot, a little more like Leonard Cohen. Almost, but I don't know. Really, really quite like him. Here's one uh, from Boytronic. This is a German act who released a couple 12 inches in the mid 1980s. I never had either one. One was called Brilliant, the other's called You. Came out between 83 and 86. And uh, just good, like, dance club uh, electro stuff. Think New Order, Confusion, if you like New Order. That kind of Blue Monday would fit right in with all that. Um, this has been a reissue of these two records on the Dark Entries label. So this just came out last year on the fabulous Dark Entries label. Sensations Fix. This is good, mellow, late night kind of stuff from a mid-70s Italian band who is kind of progressive, electronic. Um, I don't know, think um, Cluster, maybe a little bit of Noi. Um, I mean, a touch of kraut rock and spacey synths and nice soothing guitar. Franco Falsini was the guitar player and he went on to record some really fantastic solo work as well. But this album's called Ele or no, Fragment of Light. I almost said Element of Light. That's a Robin Hitchcock album. Julian Cope versus Trouble Funk. Found this real cheap. I remember when this came out and I wanted it, but I never did pick it up. Thought Julian Cope, yes. Trouble Funk, yes. This is going to be awesome. And while well, I finally picked it up, it isn't that awesome. It's just kind of an extended version of World Shut Your Mouth. I thought there was going to be like a break, you know, breakdown, some really cool beats going on. No, this is kind of, kind of a waste. But whatever. Uh, Rational Youth. This is a Canadian synth pop act from the early 1980s. 
There's a relationship with Men Without Hats. I believe the members of this band were originally in Men Without Hats back around 1980. They were gone by the time Safety Dance hit. But um, this is a 12-inch called No More and No Less by Rational Youth. Good, good synth pop, new wave. Hula Voice. This is one of their final releases. A Sheffield Industrial Funk Act from the mid-1980s. If you're into Cabaret Voltaire, 400 Blows, 23 Skidoo, that kind of thing, a certain ratio, you'll like this. Hula. Found a couple of uh, altered images, 12 inches, real cheap. Buck each, love to stay. And also, bring me closer. Fantastic 12 inch mixes. I just never had them. Love altered, altered images. And um, these are really, really good. I like them. The Pandoras, all-female 60s garage act from the mid-1980s, a little bit late for the Paisley Underground scene that had happened over in California with the Bangles, Dream Syndicate, and uh, Rain Parade. So they were a little after the fact, but um, really good, catchy garage pop. Um, this is an album called Stop Pretending. I believe it's their second, the Pandoras. Overlooked band from the, six, from the 80s, and uh, really, really good. Here's one by Al Stewart called The Early Years, and that's exactly what it is. I think it's all stuff from the late 60s. And I swear, if you didn't, if I, if you didn't know any better, I was playing this for you, you'd think it was Donovan. <laughs> it's got a very folky vibe to it. Not, like, not, not much like Time Passages or Year of the Cat, which you might be familiar with. It's less produced than that. Um, but I don't know. I really like it. Kind of just uh, whimsical British folk from the late 1960s. Here's an album that's been on my list for a long time, but I've only just now gotten around to picking it up. Bill Nelson's Red Noise, and the album is called Sound on Sound. It was, um, and uh, the only album he did with the band Red Noise, and if you like XTC, you will love this. It's just, or Devo, you're into Devo, you'll love this. Herky Jerky New Way from 79. Um, this is, this was recorded after uh, Bebop Deluxe broke up, the band Bill Nelson was in prior. And uh, after this, he recorded a string of fantastic solo albums throughout the 1980s, too. Look up Bill Nelson. He's really fantastic. But this is really good. If you want to get a sense of what they're like, look up Revolt Into Style on YouTube by Bill Nelson's Red Noise. You'll be hooked. This one by the members. It's called At the Chelsea Nightclub. Kind of a new wave, post-punk, reggae kind of feel. Um, with a touch of pub rock in there, too. Check it out. Um, I kind of dig them. If you like The Clash, they're not really much like The Clash, but they've got kind of a, that feel. A lot of, you know, punky reggae kind of vibe. Check out the members. The King Bees. Don't really know much to tell you about these guys. Found it, this pretty cheap. Kind of got a Rocky Billy feel to it. Um, U.S. band. And it came out on the RSO label. Can't give you too much more info about the King Bees, but it was a good lesson. Here's one I found for a buck. Kate Bush, Experiment 4, the UK 12-inch. And it has um, her sort of Christmas single, December Will Be Magic Again, is on the back. So this was kind of nice to find. Not a huge Kate Bush fan. I like her. But, um, you know, when I see your stuff around for a decent price, I'll pick it up. Bo Brummel's band I really, really like. Um, they had a couple hits back in 65, Just a Little, and Laugh Laugh. And after that, uh, they, they went a little more bayou country kind of swampy feel to their music. A lot of very acoustic driven. Um, I, I actually prefer the later stuff. If you're looking for a really good uh, Bo Brummel's album, YouTube the album Bradley's Barn. That's the one that really got me into them. Well, this was recorded after, I think around 74 for Warner Brothers. And it's just a self-titled album. And probably if one of their last, if not their last. But um, just good guitar, bass, swampy kind of folk rock. I don't know how else to describe them. I really like them. This was what looks like the first 12-inch by Marshall Crenshaw. You might know him from Someday, Someway, and also Whenever You're On My Mind. Those were kind of his pop hits from the early 1980s. This is an early 12-inch, I believe from 1980, and it's called Something's Gonna Happen. It's on this flimsy paper sleeve, and it's just one song on each side, 12-inch. There you go, Marshall Crenshaw. Not his hugest fan, but I saw that and it just looked interesting enough. Vision. Another band I don't know a lot from. They're from 1985. This 12 inch is called Calling of the Wild. Kind of like Ultravox, Duran Duran kind of vibe, dancey. Only thing I can really tell you is Paul Statham, who I believe is this guy here. 
uh, had previously been a member of the band B Movie, the new wave British band B Movie, and afterward worked with Peter Murphy on most of his solo work, at least during the 1980s. Things like Deep, Paul Statham had been involved with. Shockheaded Peters. I had a friend in the 80s who collected their music, and I uh, finally found a record of my own by them. This is the Life Extinguisher EP. And just good guitar, indie guitar rock from the mid-1980s, a lot like uh, The Fall, maybe, um, I don't know how else to, who else to describe them to. Just check them out. The Shockheaded Peters, kind of a scratchy guitar pop from the mid-1980s. In Spiral Carpets and their 12-inch Two Caravan, this is from their second album, The Beast Inside. Great uh, Hammond organ dance pop from uh, Manchester. And um, this is, um, yeah, really good stuff. In Spiral Carpets, I'm a big fan of theirs. Here's one by another band out of Sheffield, an industrial funk band, not too unlike Hula that I was talking about earlier. They're called Chack, and this is a 12-inch called Imagination. Who needs a better life? This is when they signed over to MCA. And it's just dance, industrial, funk pop. Chack. Seems like I always find a Sudden Sway record, and uh, this, this last few expedition I made was no different. Co-Opera, their final album from 1989, uh, Through Rough Trade. And just good um, mix of guitars, synths. Um, I really don't know who to compare them to. But uh, just indie pop, mid nineteen or late 1980s. Sudden Sway. Here's been a grail of mine for a long time. Found this uh, for like three bucks in a, in a record store. It's on Cutting Records, a dance label I like a lot. This is kind of like uh, Miami freestyle breakbeat stuff. And I never can pronounce this. Hashim is the artist. The song is called Al Naif the Soul can never pronounce this but look this up on youtube if you're into like body popping mid or early 1980s electro this is just a killer 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 track i've had it on one of these cds that was released through tommy boy called the perfect beats which collects a lot of um, new york english early 80s disco electro and this was on there and i just fell in love with it so and and, and i'm kind of on a cutting records kick anything i see on cutting i i try to pick up Unkiss That Kiss from Stephen Tintin Duffy. At this point, he was Stephen A.J. Duffy. This is one of the pop 12 inches he released in 1985, mid-1980s, um, before he formed the more acoustically based The Lilac Time. But great catchy song. I've always had the 7 inch of this. Found an extended mix, so went ahead and snagged it. It's cheap enough. Here's one from Pete Shelley, one of his last solo records. Nothing like the Buzzcocks. This is like electropop. It's called waiting for love but i always like pete shelley this isn't his best work but it's a good record i enjoyed it picked up a couple nuggets if i can get them apart here this one is volume five pop part three full of fantastic tracks i love to pick up these nuggets whenever i find them it has the knickerbockers on here the vogues love and spoonful the association doing uh, pandora's golden heebie-jeebies great track american breed bend me shape me Grassroots, Where Were You When I Needed You, Electric Prunes, The Trade Winds, Strawberry Alarm Clock. This thing is just packed with good songs. I love Nuggets. So there's one I never had. Here's another one I picked up called The Northwest. It's exactly what it is. Sounds like it's bands from the Northwest. Paul Revere and the Raiders, Kingsman. The Kingsman, um, yeah, they're, they're, they, they have a track on here. The Kingsman are the, groups that, the group that did Louie Louie. Well, they have another song called I Guess I Was Dreaming, which is nothing like that. Really good, tuneful, jangly guitar pop. Um, the Sonics are on here. Daily Flash. Uh, yeah, just great stuff. The Northwest. Nuggets, Volume 8. Here's an uh, album re-released by 23 Skidoo, a band uh, I've been looking for the records for a long time. They're hard to get these days. This is another industrial funk band out of the UK. Um, this one borders between industrial disco funk to more just experimental. Um, it's an album called Seven Songs, and it has been appended by some radio sessions and some 12-inch mixes as well. It's a double album. So, 23 Skidoo. Check them out. The Left Bank, 60s Baroque pop band. That's how they're often described as Baroque pop. Their biggest hit was Walk Away Renee. They had another one called Pretty Ballerina that was almost as big. Just good, tuneful pop music. 
Um, the Left Bank 2. This is their second album from the Smash label, and I believe it's from 1968. Abyssidari is a fantastic band. I forget where they're from, but uh, they're, they're a U.S. band. Atmospheric guitar pop, if you're a fan of, like, the Chameleons or, um, you know, I don't know, even New Order. Um, just trying to think of a, a, any more of a comparison for them. Just good atmospheric guitar, moody guitar music from the mid-1980s. And this is an album called Eureka, which has been appended with um, some 12-inch mixes and uh, some, some other, you know, oddities as well. And it came with a CD, too. So nice stuff there. Manford Man. This is an album they put out called As Is. I didn't know any of the songs from it. I love Manford Man. This is nothing like Blinded by the Light. It's not Manford Man's Earth Band. This is the band of Manford Man from the mid-1960s with uh, singer Mike Diabo. I love him during this time period. This is the, the lineup that recorded uh, The Mighty Quinn and also uh, the other one, what's the one I'm thinking of? My Name is Jack. Fantastic songs. So this is just a good British pop album, uh, not unlike The Kinks. If you like the kink, she'll like this. Manfred Mann, as is. Marie Davidson, I don't know much about her. The album's called Un Autre Voyage. I probably butchered that. <laughs> minimal electronic, minimal atmospheric electronic is probably the best way to describe this. No vocals, good for late at night, just kind of trancey, not, but not in a disco trancey way, more in just kind of a hypnotic kind of way. Marie Davidson, good electronic stuff there, like it. Okay, I showed you that Hashim record a little bit ago that's been a holy grail of mine for like Dance 12 Inches. This has been a holy grail of mine for a long, long time. The Egyptian Lover. <laughs> this is called The Lover. And the reason I got this was because of the track I Want to Make Love. And there's a bonus beats version of it. And long story short, too late. <laughs> back in the mid-1980s, there was a dance goth club called uh, Sparks back in, in Dallas. And I remember dancing on the dance floor and this came on and I and I just thought it was the best thing in the world this I want to make love bonus beats look it up on YouTube I thought it was the most danceable thing in the world I ran off that dance floor after the song was over and I was like what was that song well of course in the loud club the DJ goes it's the Egyptian lover bonus beats I'm like I didn't catch the title but I thought oh I'll find it turns out there are gazillions of Egyptian lover 12 inches out there and they all have bonus beats well, most of them do. So I must have bought five or six Egyptian Lover 12 inches before I finally just gave up. And I found it online. I found it through YouTube. It was just, I stumbled upon it and I'm like, that's the song. So I went on Discogs. I cheated and I ordered it. So that is the short of it. If you like elect breakbeat, electronic, just, uh, it's so good. I want to make love bonus beats. Look it up. Definitely if you're into club music from the 80s, which I am couple more here to show uh the the record store release of the song giant which was fe featured on their uh soul mining album one of my favorite songs by the the and this is a 12 inch they released of it with on the back a dj food remix which is really really good um priced a little high on record store day so i found a closeout copy for about six bucks and um really good cool looking uh, inner sleeve to it and nice looking label as well so turns out the artist that did a lot of this stuff, I believe was Matt Johnson's brother and he passed away recently. Sorry to hear that. He always had really good, unique art. Really, really liked all that. And finally, well, last couple sulk. I mean, this has been on my list for a long time. I've had this digitally. This is a British band, current British band. They just released a brand new album. That's kind of what got me to think about this one. This is graceless. Their first album. Think stone roses, charlatans, um, that whole just great psychedelic pop, you know, with a modern feel to it, Sulk. The album is called Graceless. Look, look, look them up. You'll be, you'll be into them if you're into that kind of music. And finally, The Wishing Stones and Wildwood. This was a band, late 80s jangly guitar band from England formed by an ex-member of The Loft, who I showed earlier, uh, The Weather Prophets, Pete Astor's band, The Loft. The bass player, after they broke up, formed the Wishing Stones. And uh, if you're into things like House of Love or, um, I don't know how else to describe them. Just good jangly, you know, guitar pop. I don't know how else to really describe it. So there you go. Uh, 24 minutes. I think we have, uh, I've, I've taken up enough of your time. 
So um, I did, there is other stuff I want to show, some 45s. So um, we'll do that in another video. So um, look forward to seeing that soon. And I hope you're all doing well. Keep that vinyl spinning, all right?